G'day guys, Mackie with the Outer Circle, and today we're going to talk about this thing. It's a brand new super heavy tank from Forge World. Now that should get us pretty excited, but it's actually not. Um, I don't hate the thing, I just want to get that out of the way straight away. I think it looks perfectly good. It's a very well designed vehicle from the looks of things for a game that is not 40k. Now, hear me out. Yes, it's got a lot of marine attributes. It's got, you know, the, the pontoon style style look to it, like um, on the Land Raider and that kind of thing. And yeah, it's got marine looking kind of weaponry. But it doesn't feel like a marine vehicle. This looks like the Scorpion out of Halo, or as we've said on our Facebook page all day, it looks like something out of G.I. Joe. Like you can just imagine a six-year-old kid grabbing this thing on the top of the tank and making vroom vroom noises as he moves it around and ba 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 machine gun noises, you know? It just... It doesn't look 40k. Now, I get it. If they want to move in a completely different design direction, that's fine. They're, it's their fucking game, right? Forge World, Games Workshop, whatever. They can make whatever they like. All this channel sets out to do is explain how fans feel. And not all fans, just a minority, or sometimes the majority. And that is, we like what we like. Um, some people love change, some don't. Some, like me, love change if it's done right. Some people, though, and sadly this is a large chunk of the Warhammer community, they adore change no matter what, because they just think Games Workshop can do no wrong. On the other end of the spectrum, you have people like Cat, the other host on this channel, who thinks that pretty much everything Games Workshop does is wrong. Um, I'm somewhere towards the middle, but I'm very sceptical as well. Um, very cynical, too, <laughs> where I really can't take GW at their face value. When I look at this tank, this just rams home a lot of the problems I've been having with Forge World over the last few years. And I respect Forge World a lot more than the parent company, Games Workshop, but they've got a lot of flaws. Um, just quickly, I want to talk about those. And basically, it comes down to when they bought out the Horus Heresy, Games Workshop didn't want to give it the time of day. Now, nah, there's no market for it. No one will give a shit about the Heresy. Forge World brings it out. All of a sudden, turns out people actually really gave a fuck. And they really wanted to play the Horus Heresy. Now, not everyone. It appeals to a different group of people. But Forge World quickly discovered they actually could barely keep up with demand. They even said it numerous open days. They couldn't believe how much of a success it was. Books weren't ready. Models weren't ready. They just thought, oh, yeah, you know, we'll release the books whenever. They really didn't expect people to just be like, where's the next book? Where's the next book? Where's the next kit? And Forge World was just overwhelmed by that because they're not set up to mass produce rapidly books and models like Games Workshop is. Forge World's attitude, very much from what I hear from the people who have worked there, or in some cases still do, is a it gets done when it gets done policy. Um, now that's fine and well, but the thing is people are expecting certain things at Forge World. They're expecting to get their Primarchs for 30k. They're expecting to get their basic rules for 30k. They're expecting the little things like decals and upgrade kits. So it's very disheartening for people when they're seeing Forge World focus on fucking Custodes non-stop, and now Primaris Marines. Because as far as I think it's safe to say most Heresy people are concerned, they don't give a fuck about either of those things. Forge World's like a kid with ADD. They just chase after wherever they think the money is at next and what they think will be a cool little project. That's fine and well. Uh, they make the product, they get to pick when the product is delivered, what's shown off, etc. Nonetheless, you do kind of owe it to your customers to finish what you've started. And right now, there's so many outstanding kits, so many outstanding models. Um, we still don't have a couple of the Primarchs. Uh, in fact, we're still missing at least five Primarchs. We, we still need Alpharius, we still need Dawn, both of whom came out in Book 3. Uh, book 3 came out, I think, 2013, early 20... No, early 2014, I correct myself. So that's over three years ago, and there's still no models for them. There's still no Learning and Terminator models for the Alpha Legion. We still have no Sanguinius, Khan, uh, or Lionel Johnson. We definitely don't have an Emperor model. So there's a lot of things that are fucking missing. Uh, we don't have Constantin Veldor. 
yet. We don't have Janisha Kroll. We don't have any of the Space Wolf special characters except for Geigor Fellhand, who no one gives a fuck about, let's be honest. Um, although he looks alright, I'll give him that. Basically, Forge World just... It's like a headless chicken. They're just running around doing a bit here, a bit there, and they're not achieving what the people want them to do. People really want them to just focus and, and get out the Horus Heresy. Get all the factions playable. You know, people want an Imperial army that's somewhere between Militia and Solar Auxilia. People want the Mechanicum to actually get a proper Dark Mechanicus component. People want the Space Marine Legions to be filled out in their entirety. Get to that point, people will calm the fuck down. But instead, Forge World's like, uh, why don't we just go off on a fucking tangent? Let's release more Blood Bowl star characters, star players, that you can't use in store anyway because they're fucking Forge World resins, right? Um, they really need to just get a design team together and just stick them on a game and say, you work on this. Do not fucking touch anything else. You just get this mashed out. Instead, they pull... If you look in their brochures, you'll see they pull staff off and on projects all the time. And, you know, one minute they're sculpting marine parts, the next they're sculpting spare arms for Tyranids, which, hey, that's great. There needs to be more Tyranid stuff, but, you know. Um, the thing is, is, they're just a headless chicken, like I said before. People are not screaming for another Space Marine tank, especially not a Primaris super heavy tank that looks like it's out of Command and Conquer, or G.I. Joe, or fucking Beast Wars, or who knows what, right? The only thing this fucking looks like is a tank from another game. It doesn't look like it belongs in this game. For drilled, you need to fucking sit down, and you need to plan out your shit. I've said it numerous times before, back when I was on like the Galaxy and Flames blog, we're talking back like 2011, 2012 here. I said, get all the legions, decals, rules, shoulder pads, torsos, helmets out. Do that and you'll be in a fucking good place. They didn't do that. Turn to shit immediately because everyone went, well, fuck, I've got no rules for my legion. I've got no models for my legion. Why work on my legion? And that problem still dogs us now. People who play Dark Angels, for example, are like, mm, I kind of got some of the rules, but what are our special characters going to be? What are they going to give to the army? What about the lion himself? How are they going to play when we get all our additional war gear and special units added in? We're going to get some special units, right? Deathwing, Ravenwing, Dreadwing, Ironwing. What the fuck are we going to get? We don't know, right? Blood Angels plays, same thing. They're like, ooh, are we going to get Sanguinian, um, Sanguinary Guard? Are we going to get uh, Death Company? I will probably say no to the Death Company, but yeah, I'm, I imagine they'll get a 30k version of Sanguinary Guard that'll be pretty fucking kick-ass. Uh, White Scars players. Surely they're going to get some sort of bike uh, command squad, I'd imagine, something like that. But, again, we we don't have them. We don't fucking know. So people who want to play those armies are really hesitant to buy anything. They're really like, oh, should I? Oh, I, I, oh, I don't know. Because what happens if they go out and they buy a whole bunch of models and they just don't work with their army? That's, that's a problem I kind of have with my Thousand Sons. I just, what I call playing it smart when I made them, I said, look, the one thing I know that all armies need is lots of troops, tactical squads, legion support squads, tactical uh, support squads, that kind of thing. So I went out and built all those. And then when the rules all dropped, I was like, yeah, hey, call it, called it perfectly. But Blood Angels, White Scars, Dark Angels, they're a different kettle of fish. Because all three of them have elements that are fast attack, especially the White Scars. You know, Blood Angels are big on jump troops and assault infantry. Uh, Dark Angels are often known for their Ravenwing. So, then you've got um, the heavy Terminator aspects of the Dark Angels and the Knightly Orders and how that's going to work in. There'll probably be some sort of like Caliban swords unit, like a Knight Brethren type thing, like the Templar Brethren in the uh, Imperial Fist range. But... Who knows? No one knows. So people are afraid to commit to those forces. Uh, Dark Mechanicum. People who play Mechanicum in 30k are like, yep, great. I can play like, you know, Tagmata or Reductor or whatever, but that's sort of, it's, it's kind of limiting. They don't have any like demon engines. They don't have any weird 
biological shit that's just been scraped together out of what was laying on the floor and someone's pushed a demon into it, you know? Um, the only people who have fully fleshed out factions at the moment are custode players. And they're pretty much considered the cancer of 30k. Uh, not the people themselves for enjoying custodes. You're allowed to enjoy whatever you want. Let's just get that straight. But the faction is known to be overpowered and problematic. And a lot of the custode players, no offence to them, are taking the options that are bad to their opponents, right? They're taking the Tribune with the Cyber Familiar and the Shield. Of course people are going to have a bad taste in their mouth and hate on your faction when you do that. Same as myself. I'm a Thousand Suns player. I have to be careful what I take. I am anyway, but if I take too much psychic goodness... People are going to get shitty because the psychic phase is just this wild herring. No one knows what to do with it. They're like, ooh, fuck. You know? Um, and yeah, this is all just reinforced by Forge World just failing to produce shit. Because they go off on tangents. They focus on the wrong things. People aren't looking for another marine super heavy. You know? If, if I was, like, you know, a betting man, I'd say people probably want more orc stuff more Tyranid stuff. Hey, this is a battle, remember those? You want to talk about d gender diversity and other fucking equality piss? Maybe make some more units for Sisters of Battle, I don't know. You know? Could you imagine, like, a mobile fortress monastery? <laughs> like, how fun would that be? Hey, hell, make it grab, make it a relic. The other problem is that, like, when Forge World's making things like this, this skimmer, super heavy thing which looks like part of the Tentative 4 crashed into it from Star Wars, and it's got some pontoons out here. It's kind of like a Grav Mastodon, with the turret off a fell blade. Um, how do you justify this in the fluff? Like, we've taken a lot of big steps, saying that Belisarius Call somehow made new, better marines, with new, better war gear, and that nobody's jumped down his throat for this, nobody's caught him doing this, and now we've got, like, new versions of plasma cannons, new versions of accelerator cannons, void shields on a gigantic super heavy grav tank. This guy must get around. I'm surprised that he just seems to cover so many different departments himself. Like, people... Like, you've got to realise, this this does not mesh with the fluff. Forge World's better at writing fluff, but Alan Bly's gone now. Call me a prick for saying it, but Alan Bly held a lot of the Forge World fluff together because he was so knowledgeable and so many different writers went to him for advice. Without him, I don't know that they're going to have that same level of quality. Uh, this clearly is not like a lost STC or anything like that because these are clearly like the modern call style of plasma cannons with these little rails down the bottom. and Yeah, no. This thing's 110% uh, Call has made it, right? This is not a recovered relic STC or anything like that. And the grav plating also gives it away because nothing in 30k so far has been built with like this heavy duty grav plating all around. It's always smaller and more refined. Um, so yeah, I look. I don't hate the thing. It just doesn't look 40k, and I wish Forge World to stick to their guns. That's really all that I'm saying. This is just a little ramble um, that's been going through my mind all day at work. And I thought I'd just make a quick video to talk about it, because, yeah, it's what we do. Nobody try and take it too personal, just give us your thoughts and feedback below. Do you actually think it looks like a 40k tank? Maybe. Um, I'd like to know what people actually think. Um, also, give me your best fluff to justify this. That's a good one. Yeah, uh, write down in the comments below the video what you think is great fluff to justify this tank, okay? We've written some great fluff before, um, viewers on the channel and myself talking about like um, brainstorming together. I like to think we do it as a community. Um, brainstorming like, you know, how Primaris could be like the, the Thunder Warrior project um, fully realized or something like that. Would have been a good way to do it, but whatever. Um, yeah, maybe someone's got a great take on how this thing that's clearly like the full modern look, you know, someone come up with a good way to justify it. That's all I'm asking. Mac with the Outer Circle, thanks all for watching this probably boring, let's face it, uh, little short video, and I'll see you all next time.